What's going on guys? This is Al B back with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your Arturia Keylab 49 MK2 with the FL Studio. Now the way I'm going to show you today is going to allow you to get the full functionality out of this controller that you would expect and in my opinion it's the best workflow. Now this template will not only work for the Keylab 49 MK2 but it will work for the 61 and the 88 key as well for all of the Mark II versions. Um, the only thing that will be different is if you have a mini lab mk2 i will put a link in the description and a card on screen for the specific video and template for the mini lab mk2 but for the key lab mk2 versions they will all work with this template this is going to allow you to use your drum pads like you would an npc or any other traditional drum machine that means you can assign your different drum sounds or your different sample chops to the different pads and be able to tap them out All right, so you can assign different drums, different effects and different sample chops and be able to tap them out just like an NPC. Now this is different than what most people will show you because it does not use the FPC inside of FL Studio. The method I'm gonna show you does not use the FPC and so with my method, you'll still be able to have your different drum sounds and your different chops. You'll be able to have them in their own separate channels from the jump and this makes it much easier when it's time to actually mix and send your different sounds to the mixer and when it's time to do that piece of it you have a lot more flexibility your, your drum sounds are still separated your midi data is still separated and so you still have that full flexibility and over the arrangement and over the sounds so this is the best workflow in my opinion for using the controller as well as for being able to kind of get to the next phase in the production when it's time to start mixing in FL Studio. Um, the play, pause, and stop and record buttons will work as you would expect. And also, if you look on the right-hand side of the controller, you'll see the select buttons underneath the faders. You're gonna be able to use those buttons to change what instrument your keys are playing. And if you're loop recording, that means you can play one instrument and then come back and play another instrument on top of it. Um, say you're playing a melody and then coming back and playing a counter melody on top of it. Whatever you're doing when you're building your beat, you're gonna be able to do that without having to touch FL Studio. And that's really the power of this custom template that I'm going to show you. But for now, let's just look at how it works in FL Studio. And then I'm gonna show you how to set it up for yourselves at home. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so real quick, what I want to do is show you a quick live demo of how this template works once you get it set up for yourselves at home. The first thing to note is that each pad will control a different channel. So the first pad, the bottom left, will control channel one. The next pad will control channel two, channel three, so forth and so on, all the way up to channel 16. So, um, I like to start from the bottom left being channel one, um, but depending on how you have your channel rack arranged, right, it will trigger a different channel. So the way I have the template set up, the bottom left will trigger channel one, the next pad will trigger channel two, then channel three and channel four, and you come back up to the left and then the channel five, okay? And we do that all the way up to channel 16. So for example, Okay, so I can tap out my drums or you can assign different samples or different chops to the pads um, by putting them in the right order in the channel rack. Okay, so that's the first thing. Your stop, your play and pause and your record buttons will work as you would expect them to. Nothing really, um, nothing really too much going on there. On the right hand side, you have these buttons underneath your faders that say select um, above them. They say channel. You can use these buttons to change what instrument is selected in the channel rack, which basically changes what instrument your keys will play. Okay. That's what that changes. So for example, analog lab is in channel six. So if I just hit the six button over here for channel six, now my channel rack is controlling channel six and I can I can play it with the keys and I can jump to pigments in channel seven. 
right? And I don't have to touch the DAW. I did all that from the keyboard. And this is great when it comes time to loop record. I can play a melody, let it keep looping, play a counter melody on top of it, another melody, let it keep looping, come back and add some drums, let it keep looping, add some more drums. So you really can build your beat up right without having to touch FL Studio as far as clicking with the mouse and things like that. And that's how you get the beat going really well before you start messing with mixing and getting all caught with the mouse. And, you know, you can really catch a vibe just from using the keyboard. Another thing to note is that my method doesn't use the FPC. A lot of people who show you how to set this up with the pads, they'll use the FPC, um, which I don't like with the method I'm showing you. You can keep your MIDI data separate because they're still in their own channels. And that becomes super helpful when it's time to mix your beats when it's time to arrange or if you're making like MIDI kits, right? It's super helpful. And so this is the best workflow you're going to get with FL Studio for the Keylab MK2. All right. So let me give you guys a quick example of me using this in a loop recording situation. I got carried away a little bit there, but you guys can see how you can really kind of get a vibe going, man. Just, to, just, just so you get an idea. And all you got to do is you pick your different sounds from your sound kits and things, and you drag them right into your channels, or you go and you select a different instrument, and and that's how you put it in the channel. If you're re really new to FL Studio and you don't know how to load your actual sounds, that's that's how you do that. But I mean, that's just it, guys. So that's kind of you know. That's kind of how it works. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to show you guys how to set this up for yourselves at home. OK, so now that you kind of understand how this works, I'm going to show you how to set it up for yourself. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to um, the link in the description where I will include a link to download the template. Quick disclaimer, it does cost a small amount of money, but it's totally worth it. And it goes a long way towards supporting the channel for that. I appreciate you. And when you download the template, it's going to come as a zip folder and you have to unzip it. And when you unzip it, um, it's going to have three files in it. And these will one of these will be an instruction file that just kind of tells you the common issues that people have and how to fix those. So be sure to check there um, for any issues you might have. And there may and there may be a fix there for you. The other two files are going to be the files that we actually push with the controller. OK, but just make sure you download the template. You unzip the folder and it'll be three different files that we're going to actually push. OK, then you're going to want to go to Twartria.com. If you don't already have an account, register for one. 
um, register your keyboard and then go to my products and then belief beneath there, you're going to see a button to download. OK, so once you've made an account, registered your keyboard and then go to my products, you're going to be able to go to downloads and then download MIDI Control Center. That's the application that we're going to use to program the controller. After you've downloaded and installed MIDI Control Center, you're going to open it up. And if your keyboard is plugged in, it should recognize it and show it as the connected device. Um, go ahead and update your firmware if you can. Mine is already up to date, but go ahead and update your firmware. Um, just make sure it's up to date. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go down to the bottom left. You're going to want to go to import and the same place where you save that. This is LB template. You're going to go find that place, find that folder um, and you're going to want to import FLS dash MPC dash LB V3. So let's click this and let's open that. And that's going to be what I what I import. OK, so you're going to see it here now listed as a user template and then you're going to highlight user one and hit store two. And this is going to push the LB template to the user one program on the controller. OK, your controller can have many different user settings. And in this case, we're pushing the LB template to user one setting. OK, so that's the um, that's the controller map. OK, if you look in the top left, it's, it's under the controller map section. So that's a map for the controller. The this is LB template is a custom mapping. Then you're going to go over to device settings top right. Now, now we're talking about the device settings, things like the power saving, things like how sensitive your pads are, um, how sensitive your keys are and different things like that. Um, you're going to want to import the device settings template as well. So do another import here, but this time we're under device settings um, and go back to the same folder where the This Is Abby template is. Go inside the This Is Abby template and open up the Minilab MK2 dot keylab mk2 underscore ds for device settings open that up boom um and just again hit store to user one and you should be good to go so now let's close out of this make sure you actually close it out because you can't have the midi control center application and fl studio using the keyboard at the same time so let's exit out of this so now that we have the templates pushed to the keyboard, the next thing you're going to want to do is come make sure that you have FL Studio set up correctly. So let's go to options, MIDI settings. OK, and the main thing you don't want to do is for the input section, make sure you select Keylab MK249 and make sure it's enabled. So you should see a green button here and you should see a green power icon next to it. Same thing for MIDI N2. You should see a green enable and a power icon next to it. OK, but keep this one highlighted that says Keylab MK249. Make sure you set controller type to generic controller. OK. At the very top, make sure you keep it set to generic controller. Make sure you have Omni preview channel set to MIDI channel 10. OK, and that's all that you should have to do in FL Studio. And now that you've actually finished completing the FL Studio settings, the next thing you're going to want to do is actually enable the template on your controller. Remember, we push it to user one. So you're going to hit the user button here and you can scroll to different user options. In our case, we put it on user one and press in the center button and now you have it selected. You'll see it say FLS MPC LB V3. And that's how you know that you have the template enabled. And now if I exit this out and I tap a pad, it's working just like we talked about. OK. And so, yeah, that is going to be how you get it set up. And now you can tap out your drums. You can change different channels. One last thing to note with the different select buttons on the right hand side, it's actually two banks. So if you hit part one right here on the right side of the LED screen, you have part one, part two, and then live button. If you hit part one, it's kind of like bank one of the buttons. So that'll be channels one through eight. And then if you hit part two, now you're selecting channels nine through 16. Right. So that's how you can select 16 different channels to change what what key, what the keys are playing. So that's how you get up to 16. And really, guys, 
that's kind of it um if you're having trouble with your pitch bin or with your mod wheel i'm going to put another uh, i'm gonna put a card on the screen i have another video that shows you how to fix that that's a different problem not of the template but if you are having trouble with your pitch bin or your mod wheel i'm going to show you how to fix that in another video I also have another video that shows you how to use your knobs to control anything in FL Studio. So check out um, check out the whole description to see those other tips and tricks to using your keyboard with FL Studio, guys. Um, yeah, I think that that's really it, guys. Without too much left to say, this is Al B. I hope you found it helpful. Hit that like button. Drop a comment. Until next time. We out. Yes, sir.